Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm excited to start a totally new project today. Uh, project Streamliner, the uh, 3D printed radio controlled land speed race car. Uh, so probably a lot like a lot of you, I've always enjoyed designing and building cars that uh, are the extreme, uh, pushing the boundaries of what's possible for a given package. Now, a full size car is a, a bit ambitious for me right now, but uh, recently, I was uh, drawn into a series of uh, YouTube videos of land speed racing at uh, the Bonneville Salt Flats earlier this year. And I really love the fact that backyard engineers can build their own cars and still be competitive. And also while there are you know, different categories of cars, the rules are primarily focused on safety and not uh, limiting the actual design possibilities. I especially fell in love with the streamliner cars that uh, were pushing 400 plus miles an hour. These cars are the F1 cars of uh, land speed uh, racing. Uh, I ended up going on a binge, reading all the material I could, uh, found out just about everything that I knew about racing cars that go around circuits was completely turned on its head by these uh, speed demons. Uh, because I'm not uh, going to build a full size car, I decided to uh, kind of study the current state of uh, radio control car land speed racing. Um, I found there's a body out there that uh, actually governs this type of racing called uh, RASA, uh, which also has a refreshingly slim rule book, uh, primarily just limiting the number of cells uh, per category. Uh, so if you're interested in this kind of racing, I think there's a lot of opportunities here for some uh, crazy engineering. Uh, which I'm hoping to do with this project. Uh, now, ultimately, I've decided, you know, to go about things a bit differently than other RC cars I've seen uh, do this, and I'm not sure how it's going to work out. Um, and I'm not even sure which class this car might be competitive in. Uh, but my real reason for trying this project is that uh, it's going to be a really great test bed for trying out uh, some different automotive technologies that I want to learn more about. Uh, for example, I haven't done a lot of... Ex uh, work with uh, CFD, aerodynamic analysis, and active aerodynamics. Um, this particular car suspension design is much less complex uh, with only five degrees of steering lock to lock. You know, this car is actually only going to be sprung and dampened in uh, heave. Simpler suspension system means we could try things like a cross-linked suspension or an active slash reactive uh, suspension without having to deal with uh, the additional degrees of freedom uh, that a normal car would have. Now partially for the viewers but uh, mainly to focus myself I've tried to set some you know high-level project goals. Uh, first I want to 3D print as many of the parts for this car as possible including the chassis suspension and body. Uh, this car won't be based off any readily available RC car chassis. This car will be low cost. I don't have an exact dollar figure, but I'm hoping to keep it under $250 US. So initially, you know, I'm not targeting motors and power systems that are, you know, hundreds of dollars per component. You know, I've, I've resigned myself to the fact that at some point I will crash this. And the first rule of racing is never race something that you can't afford to set on fire and walk away from. So that's low cost is a key factor to this. We're using 3D printing. So design of the car can be taken to kind of an extreme from a, a packaging standpoint. You know, I'm looking at uh, extremely low frontal area and as low of drag as possible. Uh, for version one, I'm targeting a conservative 
uh, less than 35 square centimeters or about five square inches of cross section. And I think, you know, in future versions, I can bring that down significantly. The vehicle will also be very lightweight, uh, which is not something you typically hear in land speed racing because weight doesn't directly affect top speed. But I need to reach top speed in a reasonable distance. The more weight I have, the more power I need, and the more power means more heat and drag for cooling and more frontal area and more structure to actually support that weight. And so while, you know, aero loads are also the most significant source of drag at high speeds, um, rolling resistance is non-negligible, especially for RC cars, you know, just given the scale and uh, weight, you know, adds rolling resistance. And then finally, if I want to try something like an active suspension design, additional weight just means more power. You know, I really want to be able to test the capabilities of 3D printing materials as well with this project. Uh, the prototypes will most likely be out of PLA. There are less commonly used, you know, much stronger materials out there that I want to experiment with and probably will need to experiment with. I want to use electronics and microcontrollers to really enhance the vehicle's capabilities even further. Controlling things like the suspension, providing data logging capabilities for all the systems, and potentially, you know, even GPS guidance and, you know, stability control in the future. I love extremely efficient and optimized designs. You know, every part of a car should and needs to be doing multiple jobs. You know, the existing cars I'm seeing use a significant number of off-the-shelf, you know, discrete parts, which add weight and limit the packaging possibilities. And the last piece, but I want this to be safe and stable to drive at very high speeds. Uh, you know, it is dangerous to hit something at uh, 100 plus mile an hour, but also because it can be very expensive to hit something at 100 plus miles per hour. So I'm excited uh, about this project because it's an opportunity to get to learn and test more, you know, motorsport type design and technologies. Without delaying anymore, let's go ahead and kind of launch into, you know, where I'm at with the design right now. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, rear suspension here. I think uh, the most unique thing about the rear suspension design is the uh, hub motor uh, feature that I've come up with. I'm not aware of any other land speed racing RC cars using this, uh, but I think it's ideal because it offers the highest efficiency, a nice stabilizing uh, gyroscopic effect. Uh, the lowest weight and a lot of possibilities like in, making the wheel out of aluminum to use as a heat sink or easily changing the top speed of the car or even utilizing different motor sizes. So, And it's also ideal because if you've watched some of my uh, past videos, I don't have to deal with uh, 3D printed gears or belts, which can be uh, prone to failure. Uh, being a direct drive like this, uh, I shouldn't have those issues. I'm not sure exactly which uh, brushless motor to target at this time. Most manufacturers don't provide a KT rating in their documentation, uh, which is essentially like the torque factor for the actual motor. So I'm potentially going to have to buy a few and actually test them out. You know, fortunately, these motors are cheap, mostly under $30 each. Uh, but for right now, this is designed around a 1500 kV 2812 size uh, racing quadcopter motor, which is not exactly the perfect size. Ideally, I'd want something a little larger in diameter, like a 3312 at 1700 kV or so. Uh, but that combo doesn't quite exist. Uh, again, I'll just try it out and see what happens uh, first. Uh, I might need a pusher car, uh, much like the uh, real thing, to get the RC car up to a speed that the motor has sufficient torque uh, to take over. Uh, which I think actually would be kind of cool. Now, suspension-wise, I've been through a lot of iterations. Uh, the rear suspension is really straightforward uh, trailing arm with a leaf spring and a horizontally placed uh, single damper. The suspension design also allows me to swap out components uh, to try different configurations. And the shock absorber here, I'll talk about in a later video, but uh, as you can see, it's got a couple of additional ports for uh, hydraulically being cross-linked with the uh, front damper um, and potentially an active suspension in the future. So moving on to the front suspension itself. The front suspension has been through the most change. Uh, the front suspension is unique because it must provide 
uh, significant travel, actually more than the rear. It has to be able to steer and it has to be able to fit in an exceedingly small space where the nose is actually sloping down. So I started off with a double wishbone design similar to uh, what was used in the uh, speed liners like the uh, Buckeye Bullet or the Bloodhound SSC. Uh, but after a few weeks of messing around with these designs, I decided I really wasn't going to be able to fit all the components into the space available without adding even more complexity and weight. So I went through a few more other suspension designs like a sliding pillar and some other motorcycle type uh, front suspensions. Uh, but I mostly just kept designing myself into a wall where I would end up with uh, bad uh, steering geometry. So I toyed with actually uh, putting the front wheels in line like a lot of uh, streamliners, but nixed that idea for at least version one. I'm just concerned about the stability of that. Um, I finally found several streamliners which were using essentially a four link, uh, reversed four link design. And this was ideal for what I'm trying to do here. You know, this suspension design allowed me to mount the servo uh, actually in the front axle itself without the need for any linkages, um, which might have uh, messed up my steering geometry. So these are the four linkage arms. Uh, the bottom one is actually a, a solid control arm where I actually have an arm that comes off where the damper will uh, hook up to. Um, on top here, we actually have a leaf spring, much like the rear, um, that is tied between the uh, pivot point of the front arms as well as the actual uh, front axle itself. So again, a very compact uh, spring design that's easy to change out and swap out for different uh, pieces. I'm planning on probably using something like a three millimeter carbon fiber uh, solid rod for the actual pivot points uh, since it's very lightweight. And I'll come up with a uh, way to actually uh, clamp that in there at a later time. And so this actually rotates the front wheels via a rack and pinion with a uh, significant mechanical advantage. Uh, this is just an MG90 servo, which is based on the tried and true uh, SG90, uh, but it'll have metal gears as well as a, a coreless motor. So it'll be a little bit faster reacting and more torque. Uh, you know, unsprung weight is not ideal, but it really doesn't matter in this uh, particular application. Also, while I'm here, I should also note that uh, streamliners often don't run tow, camber, caster, or ackerman uh, because they need to keep the wheel upright at all times. And these particular suspension geometries are really designed for tires with uh, large contact patches and high uh, lateral loads. This suspension does have a small amount of caster uh, because I found that uh, most of the RC cars that uh, do this speed racing do have caster built in. But this does use a less known suspension geometry that I've often heard referred to as cart in the documents that I've read. Um, essentially, to help center the wheels without having caster and, or toe, uh, the front axles are actually about four millimeters behind the actual pivot point, which is actually up here of the steering knuckle. And that helps just like a shopping cart or a trolley uh, wheel to pull the wheel back in line and self-center. It's also important to note that many land speed racers have very little suspension travel or no suspension travel, but running a RC car on pavement has unique challenges uh, because of the scale. You know, a single concrete expansion joint is 15 to 20 millimeters wide. For an RC car, this is like a pothole, you know, that's 18 to 24 centimeters in size uh, for a real car. And as you can imagine, uh, these cars get airborne very quickly if there's any air that comes under the uh, nose. So for most of these RC cars, they make them extremely heavy to try to prevent this from happening. Um, you know, this being a lightweight RC car, we can't, you know, use weight to our advantage for that particular issue. So we'll have to have a very compliant suspension. Full-size speed liners typically have less than 50 millimeters of ground clearance, 
Um, that's roughly 30, three to four millimeters uh, for an RC car. But that's, again, just not enough to clear that expansion joint or you know any bumps or pebbles. Uh, and real streamliners typically run very small wheel and tire diameters, often just 40 centimeters or 15 inches total. And these wheels can see speeds of up to 10,000 RPM. But for a scale RC car, that would be just 30 millimeters in diameter, which would equate to something like a 50,000 RPM uh, speed, which there's just no 3D printed wheel that won't explode or overheat very quickly at that speed. So I'm trying to keep the max RPM under 25 to 30,000 uh, for speeds up to say 180 mile an hour. But uh, we'll need to test that out. And I imagine there'll be some uh, exploding wheels in my future. So I think this is a good point to end this video. Um, you know, really the only parts that I've got solidly designed right now, or mostly designed, are the uh, suspension components themselves. Um, this body that uh, I show is simply some of the critical dimensions that I've come up with, and I've literally just lofted some surfaces um, in between those sketches so that I can kind of get a feel for uh, how everything actually fits so the next video, I'll uh, focus more on the actual design and testing of the main body structure. I'm hoping to be able to utilize a semi monocoque type design with a uh, core material like foam, uh, but the layer lines of 3D printing, you know, provide some unique challenges. I also know that these designs won't be uh, record setting, at least version one, but this is hopefully an ongoing development project that we can test out, you know, different motorsport type technologies. And, you know, eventually with the goal of setting the time, you know, for the fastest 3D printed RC car. So I'm actually, you know, really excited about this and actually a little bit scared by, you know, after watching some of the videos on YouTube, uh, seeing how fast, you know, hundred plus mile an hour it is in an RC car. Uh, you can barely see it, uh, you know, uh, the fastest RC car out there, I think, is around 200 mile an hour. And so that's that's a football field a second. Well, uh, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing. Mm -hmm.